Good morning. It's a day where it's only going to reach a high of 30 degrees. Positively frigid, if you ask me. It's a day, a couple days, that have been sandwiched in between one horrific heat wave that has just ended and another slightly less horrific heat wave that is still to come. So I'm enjoying this lovely weather and I'm trying to get this video done, which is going to be me attempting to talk about my electric setup. And so my aim is to just show you all the practicalities of a solar system, the stuff that I run on it, how much it cost me, what was involved in the setup, where it lives inside my house, and yeah, anything else I can think of. This isn't going to be a tech rundown because I don't fully understand any of that stuff myself. I'll give you numbers. There will be numbers, but it's not going to be heavy on the old numbers. It's going to be more about this is what I wanted, this is what I can run, these are the limitations, and stuff like that. So. It's a video I haven't really been looking forward to making because I'm not massively passionate about electrics, but I do think I can hopefully explain things in a way that's um, accessible to people and possibly interesting as well. So I am looking forward to diving into this now. Uh, I've done a bit of research and I think I can share things with you in a way that hopefully makes sense. And so as I attempt to explain things, I think I might need a visual aid. So goodbye, July list. Uh, you're not happening anyway because it's too hot, so I'm going to erase you and resurrect you at the end of the month. So I'm not sure the best way to approach this video. Uh, I have the whiteboard, I have whiteboard markers, there will be diagrams. So I think I'm going to divide it up into several sections. First up will be an overview of the system and what I paid and all that stuff with drawings. Secondly, I'll go through all the stuff that I run on the system. And third, I'll talk about maybe limitations of the system um, and possible plans for expansion. And lastly, uh, I got this uh, solar generator thing from a company called Bluetti. They contacted me out of the blue. You've probably seen these things on other Portugal YouTube channels. Uh, it seems like they've really blitzed the market. They're giving these things out left, right, and center. I'm a totally new YouTube channel and even I got one. We'll also talk about that because that's going to become part of my total electric system solution. So let's get into it and talk about the specs of the solar system. So my solar setup exists behind my door. Currently it provides electricity but it also acts as a storage area for spider webs home to spiders and the geckos also live back there. I'm gonna do a cleanup of this. Uh, this thing was expensive. It shouldn't really be this dusty. So I'm gonna have a little tidy up and then we can get into it. Spiders mostly cleared out, probably some lurking in the darkest corners in there, but for now it's fine. I don't feel uh, like I'm going to have daddy long legs crawling all over me when I go in there, so that's good. And so now I'm going to engage the use of the whiteboard to see if I can make some pretty diagrams that will help me explain my electrical setup. Before I dive into the explanation of my own solar system, I want to get this solar generator from Bluetti out of the box, get it on charge, and then it'll be ready to go later on when I test it out. And you can see it is gigantic. Getting it in here, getting it into my car, getting it into my house was quite a hilarious effort. And now I guess I'll clear space and try to get this thing out of the box. box within a box. Exciting times. Ooh. That's 
it's pretty heavy. So, here's what I've got. Some cables, the big unit, and I'm going to take a look at what I assume is the instruction manual, have some breakfast, and then plug this thing in. What do you think, huh? Okay, turn the thing on, connect the adapter plug, plug into the wall, the unit will automatically stop when it gets fully charged. So that is step one, and then I'll let it charge up and come back to it later on. Okay, so this thing is gigantic, and I assume it's the AC thing for plugging the whole unit into the wall. Let me just consult the manual. Yes, so that's for AC charging, and what is in here? So I've got a whole package of cables. There's all kinds of different ways to charge this thing, and I assume these cables are to do with that. I'll dive into all this later on. So this looks like the plug into the wall. Ooh, cool. So it actually says it's 64% charged already. Um, but I'm going to top it up to 100 and come back to it later on. So I don't think the camera is picking up that touchscreen very well, but it's taking in 388 watts. It's at 64% and it's around uh, 10 past 12. So let's see how long this takes to get up to... 100%. Okay, here we are in the classroom. I'm going to attempt to explain my solar system to you uh, in the simplest terms that I can because simple terms are the only way I can explain it. So uh, let's get started. And so the first thing most people want to know is how much should I pay for my system? Uh, 4,086 euros including VAT, but not including installation. Installation cost me around 300 euros in addition. My initial intention was to spend only around 3,000 euros, but I ended up selling a portion of my business. I sold a website, came into a bit of extra cash, and I figured upgrading my solar system from the bare bones, bare minimum, up a level was money well spent, and I'm really, really happy I did that. And so what did I spend that extra money on? It was my inverter. So. Let's just go over uh, the system as I have it diagrammed here, and I'll try to explain uh, sort of what I understand, what I don't understand, what was going through my mind at the time when I bought it. So I bought the system from a company called SparkPoint Solar, and they operate in this area. I was super happy with them. Uh, they sent out two guys um, to sort of give me quotes. The first guy that came, I didn't really fully understand what he was talking about. I don't know if it's because of the way he explained things. Um, I think it's more likely that I did some research in between, and so when the next guy came, I actually understood a lot more of what he was saying. So I was a little intimidated at first because I think he was so, sort of throwing numbers at me where all I really wanted to know was what sort of system do I need to power a fridge, power lights, power all the things that I wanted to use. Um, I don't need the details. I don't want the numbers. Um, just tell me you know, what you'd recommend uh, and, and why. So um, eventually I got that information and it came to light that I probably wanted to spend a little bit of extra money on the inverter. So the system uh, is made up of a bunch of stuff. This is a little diagram of the board that I have inside my house. Um, so we have this thing, Serbo GX. I don't know what Serbo means. I don't know what GX stands for. I don't care. But basically, I think that's the internet part of the thing. So this allows me to communicate with the system using an app, and I can check uh, how much battery is left, how much solar is coming in, all that stuff. And then I have the charge controller. Uh, two kilowatts array max, MPPT, 150 volt, 35A. Don't know what A is. Um, again, don't know what any of that means. I don't think I really need to. I'm pretty sure the char charge controller is just what makes the whole system talk to itself. So the panels, the inverter, and everything, it just kind of connects everything together. I don't know what those numbers are. 
I don't know what having a better charge controller might do for the system. Um, and again, I don't want to know. It all works fine. Really don't care about the details. Um, fuse box, just like a fuse box in a in a house. Uh, you know, sometimes a flip will switch. You just flip it back on. Um, you can turn things on and off using the fuse box. Fuse box, pretty basic, same as in any house. Um, sockets, also the same as in any house. And then there's a light switch that powers this little light up here. And so the three main things that anybody looking to invest in solar would want to know about would be the panels, the inverter, and the battery. At least, in my opinion, these are the things that make the most sense to me, and these are the things that determine how powerful your system is. So first up, the solar panels. They live on my roof. I have three of them. I can expand that up to six. They each bring in 375 watts of power. So the maximum that they'll be able to bring in at any one time is 1,150? 1,125 watts. Not sure if I did that math right, but there you go. Um, so that just means if the sun is shining full blast, that's the maximum amount of power that they can bring in. But if it's cloudy and they're not really bringing in a lot of power, or if my battery has already been run down from something else, then this 375 times three panels will then send power directly into the battery until it's fully charged. So when it's gloomy and crappy outside, and it has been for several days, the more panels you have, the more power you can bring in and the quicker you'll be able to charge up your battery. So the more panels you have, the more you can grab that energy in times when you really need it. Um, I haven't had any issues so far with my uh, three panels, um, but I haven't really experienced a really gloomy winter. Uh, it was pretty crappy and rainy for three weeks last year, but I actually went home to Canada for those three weeks, so I wasn't using any power at all. And so, um, you know, so I haven't ha had to push the limits of, of the panels so far. And so let's talk about the battery. The battery is the only area of the system where I feel like I can confidently give a recommendation. I've seen lots of people's solar systems, I've heard people chat about them, and oftentimes they're moaning about crappy batteries. They've got lead acid or maybe some other kind of battery I don't really know about. They've got to keep it topped up with water. It maybe malfunctions in some way. They've really got to make sure not to run it down below 50%. They've got to be really careful about how much they're using. Um, they sound basically like a nightmare, and I wanted a system that was not a nightmare. I wanted basically a completely idiot-proof system where I didn't have to babysit the batteries. And it was recommended to me that I should get a lithium battery, pay a bit more, but um, in the end, actually, they last for so long. They last for like 16 years or 6,000 cycles, um, which is way longer than the other types of batteries. And I got this lithium battery, and I'm very happy with it. I don't have to pay attention to it. Apparently, it's set so that if it runs down to 25%, uh, the system will shut down. You're not supposed to run them down lower than 20%, um, but there's automatic things put in place where everything will shut down, let the battery charge back up, and I don't need to worry about breaking anything. So that's good. Uh, I think when I got a solar system, I just heard so many horror stories about people's batteries and systems like malfunctioning and having a meltdown that that was really on my mind. So I ended up uh, springing for the battery. I think out of the whole system it was about 800 euros. Um, money very well spent and it's easy to expand them as well. So with other types of batteries apparently you can't just add on another battery here another battery there. You have to buy a whole new set of batteries. With lithium batteries you can kind of just add them on. I think I can get up to eight batteries which is amazing. I don't have enough panels to ever charge that many batteries up but uh, it's good to know. Um, I could definitely handle another battery fairly easily with the panels I have, or I could expand my panels to six panels and get another couple batteries eventually. So um, that's pretty good to know. I'm just really happy with it. It is idiot proof, and I like idiot proof when it comes to electricity. And so the battery is 2.4 kilowatt hours capacity. I've never really been able to wrap my head around that, what that means uh, in practical terms as far as how long. The battery will last. Um, I could probably figure it out, but all I can tell you is that it's been plenty. With a solar system, you generally want to try to use 
your your heavy power things such as a water pump or any power tools things like that when the sun is shining so that you can sort of bypass the battery and just use the electricity straight from the environment straight from the solar so uh, at nighttime when I'm using things um, it'll draw in the battery but I don't worry about it I haven't had any problems with it uh, it's all good and I'm really happy and so though I don't really know what 2.4 kilowatt hours means as far as how long it would take to charge down the battery using certain things all I can say is that I've never had an issue with it it's plenty of power uh, and I'm really happy I'm very happy with the battery if you have a choice go for lithium over anything else. Uh, that's my only piece of advice that I could confidently give about buying a solar system. Okay, so let's talk about something that's maybe a little bit more confusing. It took me a little bit of time to get my head around it, and that is the inverter. So, 48 volts, 1.6K, pure sine wave. I don't know what 48 volt means. I know you can get a system that's 12 volt volts and one that's 24 volts minus 48 volts. I don't know what that means in practical terms. It's just what what I got. It's what they recommended, and so it's what I got. Um, 1.6K, pure sine wave. I think the pure sine wave is just a cleaner kind of power. That's all I know about that. And 1.6K, so 1600 watts, I think that is. And what that means is I can run a maximum of 1600 watts at the same time on this system. Initially I was going to buy a 1200 watt system, um, but this is where I spent my money to upgrade to 1600 watts. Had I had more money, I would have gone up even further, but I couldn't afford anything better. This part of the system isn't easy to upgrade without um, upgrading. I think you have to upgrade the charge controller and a whole bunch of other things at the same time. So. If you're going to spend your money on anything, get the biggest and best inverter you can get because you can add on your panels later on, you can add on your battery later on. That's my other piece of advice. Um, maybe it's terrible advice, I don't know, but it seems to make sense to me. And uh, I just remember that thinking that if I had a bit more money, I would have gone with a bigger inverter. So what this means, these are the things that I run on my system. I actually don't really use a lot of power. Um, you know, I'm not used to consuming a lot of energy. Uh, I don't have to think twice about it. I'm not reducing, um, but I'm just maybe not a big user as it is. So that's an advantage for someone like me buying a system because I don't need to have a big, super huge, crazy expensive system. And I also don't need to really adjust my use of electricity either because I'm already a pretty small consumer of electricity. So these are basically all the things that I use. Um, so fridge, water pump, laptop, Power battery charger for my power tools, lights, USB chargers for like my iPhone and my internet dongle thing and just various other little things, power banks and stuff like that. The fan, very key at the moment. Uh, occasionally I use a slow cooker and a hand blender and probably other small appliances will come into my life as well. So that's basically it. The biggest users would be the water pump and I guess the tool chargers. The fridge. I don't really know how much a fridge uses because fridges are funny. They're not really on 100% of the time. So figuring out how much power a fridge uses involves some weird arithmetic that I don't really understand. Uh, it's not as much as you might think it is. However, if you do find yourself opening the freezer at night in the middle of a heat wave and then the fridge has to struggle to get back up to temperature or down to temperature, um, that'll use quite a bit of power too. So you've got to kind of keep these things in mind a little bit. but for my system, I'm not really checking things too often, uh, and I'm yeah, it, I don't feel like I uh, need to worry too much about the power that I'm using, which is amazing. I thought it would be completely the opposite. I thought I'd always be monitoring the system, always be worrying about what I use overnight. It's not the case. But here's the thing with a small inverter. If I wanted to buy something, let's say like a table saw, um, that maybe takes about 2,000 watts of power, or a more powerful water pump that might take 2,500 watts of power when it's being turned on, um, I couldn't use it. My system doesn't have enough power to power stuff like that. It wouldn't be able to power a hot water uh, washing machine. Anything that's heating stuff, it wouldn't be able to power. Couldn't use an oven, um, a hair dryer, kettle, a toaster, anything that involves heat is really a big drain on the system. But I don't really use those things. So it's not a big deal. Instead of heating my water, you know, using an electric kettle, I use a, a gas sort of kettle instead. Um, obviously that 
gives me extra expense because I have to pay for the gas as opposed to just cycling through the solar energy that's coming through my house. So if you have a better system, you could take advantage of being able to use those types of appliances and not have to use gas. If you have a big system, you can use an electric oven, not have to have a gas oven, not have to have that expense for gas. But my system's too small for that stuff. So that's one thing where maybe it would be, um, you know, a disadvantage. Uh, but I don't, I don't mind. Um, you know, gas is expensive, but I don't really use so much. And yeah, it's, it's not something that affects my life. So um, I'm really happy with my system. Uh, another thing about powering stuff is, let's say I wanted to use, well, you know what? The stuff I use, it wouldn't even add up to 1,600 uh, watt hours or watts or whatever. Um, but if I wanted to run all these things all at once and plus throw a few other heavy use items in there, my system, I think, would shut down because all of this stuff together would add up to over 1,600 watts and the system can't handle that. But there's never been a situation where I've needed to run a whole bunch of things at once. And if that situation ever did appear, like maybe I wanted to run a power tool, I, I would just unplug everything else. I'd use the power tool for a little bit, and then I would plug everything else back in, and life would go on, and I'd be totally fine. Okay, I feel like this is a lot. I feel like I'm really talking a lot here, but um, hopefully it's interesting and useful. And what else do I need to say about this thing? Um, I think that's about it. I think I've pretty much covered all the bases for how the system works uh, and the limitations of it. This price included also uh, the all the stuff I needed to mount the panels up on the roof. Uh, you can buy separate things that will allow you to put the panels on the ground. You can buy an extra thing that will tilt the panels on your roof so that it's oriented exactly south. Um, that came with all the cables I needed. So basically the price there, plus the 300-ish for the install, that's all I paid. No hidden costs, absolutely nothing else to worry about. And it was completely flawless. Everything went totally smoothly. And I've never had a problem with my system uh, since I installed it about, I think, a year, year and a half ago. I'm really happy with it. I would recommend it. And if you live in this area, in the sort of Fundao, Castella Branco area, Spark Point. Uh, I'm really happy with their service. A lot of really great after service as well. I've had questions and, and things, and they've really kind of come through with those questions. So uh, if you're in the area, check them out. And let's go see if this Blue Eddy generator thing is all charged up, and then we can experiment with that. So that humming noise is the system working pretty hard to charge up this power station thing. It doesn't often make any noise at all, um, but when it's working hard, it'll give it a bit of a hum. So I haven't found it too annoying, uh, and it's yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty quiet. It's just something you probably get used to. So let's see what's happening down here. Eighty-nine percent. It's been about an hour. That's pretty good. I'm gonna have some lunch and then come back, and we can give this thing a whirl. Okay, so I've had a snooze during the hottest part of the day. Got my siesta in, feeling energized. And let's talk about this Blue Eddy solar generator. So it's AC 200 max. It costs on sale 2,099 euros. I think the regular price is somewhere around four, uh, 2,400 euros. And it's basically more powerful than my home system by, by quite a bit. So, whereas my home system is 1.6K, this thing is 2.2. And so that's pretty amazing, I think. Um, what that means is that not only can I power certain things that I won't be able to power on my home system, it also means that I can run things at the same time. So I can't really think of a scenario where I'd want to run lots of high-powered things all at the same time, except whenever I end up getting a workshop set up. I imagine this living in my future workshop. I imagine investing in some panels so I can charge it independently of the, the home system. And then I'm just going to power a whole bunch of awesome tools from this battery, separate from my house. So it just means I don't have to worry so much about what I'm powering all at once. I'll be able to fire up a whole bunch of tools that I can't actually even run on my own system. Um, so that to me is a massive, massive uh, thing. Uh, that makes it useful all by itself. 
in addition to that, it's got around two kilowatt hours of battery power, which is around the same as my home system, a little bit less than the home system. So what that does is essentially double the amount of battery power I have, which gives me a pretty nice chunk of extra battery for when it's really gloomy outside. So in theory, if it's really crappy weather for several days, this guy's all charged up. Um, my house system goes down, the battery goes down. I can either plug in the whole system to this battery, I think. I need to look into that. Or I can just unplug my appliances from my house uh, and then plug them directly into the battery. And just buys me a whole 100% more battery time. Um, and yeah, it's essentially a backup generator. So those two things, giving me more power to power things that I can't actually power on my current system. And almost double the battery power for when it's gloomy and rainy and crappy out. Um, those are two absolutely amazing things. It means that I don't need a petrol generator or diesel generator. I can just count on this thing, um, I think. One downside to that is that I don't actually have independent panels for it. So if it's really gloomy out, I actually will probably just get one charge out of it. Um, and then I'm not going to plug it into my house system to charge it up because that'll drain my house battery. So if it had its own panels, I could then try to soak up whatever ambient light there is uh, and charge it up sort of slowly uh, in the gloomy weather. And then eventually it would kind of, you know, take power from the sun independently of my house system. But that doesn't matter so much because I have friends that have uh, electricity on the grid and this thing can charge up in multiple different ways. It's got uh, a way of charging from a generator. So I'm not going to plug a generator in to power my generator. Uh, the whole idea of this is that it's more environmentally friendly, so I probably won't do that. You can also charge it off of uh, lead acid batteries. Um, I think using those clips that you sort of clip onto a car. I don't really know how to do that, so I probably will never use that, but it's good to know it's there in an emergency. Um, you can plug it into a house, so I could take it to some friends that take pity upon me and possibly charge it up at their place uh, when it's really gloomy out for long, long periods of time. Uh, you can also charge it from the panels, so I might try to invest in some of the panels next time I get some money, and then I can have this system kind of running completely independent to my house. And interestingly, you can also charge it from your car. Uh, you plug it into your sort of lighter socket thing, and yeah, so that's kind of neat. I wouldn't turn my car on and just power the battery. Again, that's not exactly environmentally friendly. It kind of goes against the whole purpose of the thing, in my opinion. But I do drive places uh, fairly regularly, and the thing is portable enough to be able to just whack it in my car, and if I happen to be going somewhere, I can just plug it in and get a bit of charge every time I go someplace. I think that's really cool, all the options for charging. It's really super versatile. Versatile. Portable. It's pretty heavy, but it's totally doable and expandable. You can buy a whole bunch of separate battery packs, which will extend the battery life, um, I think up to three times as long, or maybe even more than that. Um, yes, yeah, so that's pretty cool too. It's very powerful. It's a really amazing backup system. And not only that, like I said, it's even more powerful than my house. So if you're looking for something, uh, if you're in a van or if you're moving onto a piece of land, you want something that's super portable, versatile, not as expensive as a home system, a lot more flexible. This is a really great solution. So I'm already impressed with this unit uh, for all those reasons that I mentioned. Um, but now I'm going to put it to the test as far as seeing how powerful it is. I don't own a toaster. I don't own a kettle. But I borrowed some from friends. So I'm going to see if this unit will make me some toast and boil me a cup of coffee. Because these two things, they involve heating. And that sucks a lot of power. So I wouldn't actually dream of using those two things on my own current solar setup. But I want to see if the Bluetti can uh, get the job done. Okay, first things first. Let's go over some of the features of this thing. We've got these. They're covered under pretty robust plastic. So to protect them from dust and stuff, and the elements. And these outlets are all the ways to charge the thing up, which I mentioned before. And then, so on the front, we have, I guess, all the outputs. So that's a DC 
12 volt DC, different kind of like attachments. Like I said, I don't really know anything about electricity, so I don't even know what that means. Um, yeah, maybe these are familiar to you. These ones are more familiar, different USB charging port things. Oops, what did I touch? I touched something back. Okay. Um, yeah, different USB types. This is some kind of a, yeah, computery type charger. And then we've got just the usual plugs. So it's got four. So yeah, you can plug in a whole bunch of things all at once, which is really amazing. And then you've got this panel, control panel. Um, has a bunch of settings and things that I need to dive into, but for the moment, I can see it's 97% charged and ready to go. And then up here, you have these wireless charging things for sticking a cell phone and stuff on top. I've never used one, but good to know it's there. It's got handles. The whole thing is super chunky. I really like the design. I'm a sucker for good design. And yeah, the thing just seems really sturdy. You wouldn't really be too scared about bringing it out on a camping trip with you and uh, kind of humping it around places. So I am impressed. But let's see if it makes toast. The toaster. Let's plug this guy in as well. Okay, toaster and kettle are ready. Okay, so let me just get some yummy bakery bread, stick it in the toaster, fire these things up, and see how it copes. Hmm. Kettle on. Okay, so time to troubleshoot because I have stuff plugged in. AC off. AC output on. Okay. So, in order to power stuff, I suppose I have to turn AC on with these things being the AC. And let's see if it works. Come on. <gasps> How about that? So, what is it doing down here? 1892. So it's using, I don't know if you can see it, but it's using almost 1900 watts. So because this is using so much power, I'm not going to use the toaster at the same time. I'm going to boil the kettle and then put the toaster on after. Kettle boiled. Although I don't really want a hot drink, but you know. So I'm gonna unplug this because why not? And now let's see if we can make some toast. Okay. Toast is being made. And the toaster uses about nearly 900 watts. So the toaster I could power on my home system, which is interesting, I didn't think I could. Um, but the kettle, definitely, definitely not. So I think that's pretty cool. So I've got my toast. I've got my maple butter, which I believe is probably a very Canadian thing. It's like diabetes in a jar. So let's stick this on the toast. Yum, yum. Yeah, this stuff is ridiculous. If you've never tried it, get your hands on some, but not too much because this stuff will kill you, I'm sure. <laughs> not a healthy option. Okay, so celebration toast. I'm really happy with this. This Blue Eddy AC200 Max thing. Uh, it's a pricey unit, but if you have the money, uh, I think it ticks a lot of boxes for people going off grid. Luckily for me, I got sent one, so that's pretty amazing because I think it's a pretty awesome bit of kit, and yeah, I'm really chuffed to have it as part of my electrical setup, and very excited to be able to boil the kettle and to make toast. Mmm. I kind of was a bit conflicted about doing kind of a product review thing. There's something just icky about the world of influencers, and I don't know if that's what that makes me. But I think because it is a product that I actually would buy, uh, and it is an environmental alternative to having a backup generator, um, I kind of just, uh, yeah, I actually feel good about it. I feel good about promoting something like that. They've also got some smaller ones that are closer to the 700 and 
400 euro range that are um, yeah a lot smaller. They're less like a backup generator and more kind of like a portable uh, power solution. So like to take camping or even to strap on the back of an e-bike and keep it charged and stuff like that. So yeah, they've got a whole wide range of stuff. Um, so check out their website. I think I can give you a discount code, which will be down in my notes, I suppose. Um, yeah, so so that's it. I actually uh, enjoyed this video. I didn't think I'd like talking about electricity, but um, putting it all down on the handy whiteboard and getting it all in front of me and forcing myself to talk about it has actually clarified a lot of stuff in my own head as well. So I found it useful. Uh, I hope you have too if you're somebody that is looking to buy a solar system but like me really doesn't know or doesn't care about electricity stuff. I hope this was useful. I hope it demystified a few things. Um, obviously there's things I don't understand um, but so far I haven't needed to but you might want to research those things. Uh, rather than take my word for it. I don't know if, um, I don't know, don't care. I don't know if that's really a good answer for, for some of these things. So you might want to look into it. But uh, I'm gonna enjoy my toast and I'm gonna say goodbye for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. And thanks for watching, like, subscribe and all that stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Mm. Maple butter good stuff.